Bans coming through already. You can see Maokai, Oriana, and Rengar and Lee Sin. So Lee Sin being taken away this time. They do not want to have Moscow 5 having it. It is the first pick, of course, for Moscow 5 this game. And I wonder how much Moscow 5 actually values Zin Zhao because it does seem like they struggled without it and it was very good at splitting team comps and it seemed like if Diamond's comfortable, Moscow 5 is one of those teams that kind of revolves around their jungler, so he is what enables everyone else to tick. And if he doesn't have what he's comfortable on, they won't be able to get it. And if Ooh. SK doesn't ban it here, then they, you know, oh, Zillion. Get it I mean, they kind of went yeah. for Zillion to start with last time, so. I mean, what, what would Moscow 5's preference be? That's the question. I'm, I'm still never convinced by Zillion. It does offer you that res, um, like that extra, it's like a six, six man V5 type fight. Is Do they value it high enough? Will they go with Jax? It is going to be Zillion. Number one priority so there Alex for them. Alex has uh, the say over the team. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Reading into these. Either one, like, uh, it's so curious, but I almost wonder if Ocelot would have even picked a Zillion, like if they could have just picked it safely. Like if they if they really wanted Zin, they probably could have just taken Zin. Or they just don't think SK is going to pick either one of them because there's a really good chance that SK doesn't want either of those picks. So they obviously felt that maybe go to Pepper Crescendo. It did cause quite a lot of oh, those yeah. problems. Especially yeah, at the Baron, in all honesty, when they were trying to find yeah. that Baron. And then go to Pepper and Genja came in. The Flash Crescendo was unreal in that team fight and really is what enabled all of it. So this is, this is again, does teams that have disrupted Moscow 5 seem to do well against them, and they're trying to disrupt Moscow 5 right now. Does RNA feel strong enough? Now, that would be a very much a we are going to kill you comp. <laughs> yeah, that would be saying it. That's pretty much what would be happening right there. Are we going to see Nocturne get locked in? Go see Pepper, of course, on Blitzcrank. Something we haven't seen that often, but he has played it a few times in tournaments before. But it's not unusual. It's you know, Blitzcrank was one of those champions that actually that progressed through season two finals. Mm -hmm. Basically got banned. banned out the whole time. And after after suddenly it played about I think the first two or three games, everyone went, yeah, we're not playing that anymore. Because if you do land that hook, you ban it. There it is. Nocturne, Blitzcrank. That's I guess the second fallback for Diamonds after Lee Sin and Zin Zhao. Third fallback. Third fallback That's was the one. His. yeah. Yeah, and then, you know, Blitzcrank would be that aggressive kill lane. They really need the buy-in from the rest of their team to pull that composition off, though. That's that's not a very great late-game comp for them. They're going to have to win this one early, which hasn't been a problem this tournament, by the way, this whole late-game stall that we've gotten addicted to thinking about because of all these late-game team comps that have been coming out. But this tournament, it has not been about that whatsoever. Yeah, we haven't really seen many games go past 40 minutes as it stands. Looks like Kevin is going to have his choice. I don't know, he's been on Trundle for a long time, but I don't think he's going to go with it. Katarina is a possibility. Left he unbanned. was banned in the last game. There it is. Ocelot's going to get Katarina, and it's going to be Ezreal Sona as well. These are actually strong comp from SK Gaming here. It's looking like that. Just the combination of Zin Zhao's AoE with Crescendo, with the Katarina. They're really going to have to bring that together with a solid top laner or jungler, depending on where they want that to go. But it's a little risky picking Katarina into a zillion just because she's so much about committing herself to get that kill, getting the reset, and then chaining. And if you don't get that first kill, a lot of it can just end up backfiring on you. So and especially you know, on a team like SK who tilts a bit, that's a dangerous pick. And the arcane shift on Ezreal is kind of a counter to Blitzcrank straight away. It is. Because you can get out of those hooks. You just you yeah, time it at quick. the right moment. You wait until the hook is about to land, and you, you let it hit. And then during the cast time, it hits, and you'll cancel it as you go through. But I mean. We've seen this. You, you can say Ezreal's a counter pick to Blitz, and it is in lane, but in the grander scheme of the game, Blitzcrank is still Blitzcrank, and he can still pull in one fights for you. You can still pull that one fight, that one thing, or if you pull Mac Noon, it's a problem. It backfires on you. But uh, it is going to be the uh, Zillion Jacks combo. So this is something we've seen Moscow 5 running before. So like we mentioned before, they're playing with stuff that they're confident with, they're comfortable with. Nocturne, we've seen actually you know, Watch played absolutely brilliant on Nocturne during, during the MLG mm -hmm. Championships, uh, MLG in Dallas, just last weekend. It's a jungler that works if the rest of the team are willing to dive with him. And they have Darien with the Zillion Revive. So this is this is their Zillion Jax. I mean, they've done their Zillion Olaf. Their font. It's something that they've been able to win with. They're really the only team that runs Zillion successfully, if I can actually think back and remember. I haven't seen many other teams be able to do this. And I wonder how SK is going to close this out because 
they want something up against Jax, and we haven't really seen someone do that successfully yet this tournament. Jax seems to be running over a lot of these games. These teams aren't the best at dealing with it. And you've also got the Counter Strike and the Power Fist to interrupt Katarina. Oh, that would be good. That would be very good. And it is going to be locked in. I don't know. I have not seen Kevin playing that before. But if he plays it well, that is a great pick against Jax. The range to Rask. Kale is one of the strongest top laners in the game. I do not like. You can see why Kale doesn't see as much play because she doesn't fit the mold of having kind of a bruisery top lane. Yeah or a double AP, it's, you're, you're throwing a second 80 carry on your team, which puts a large stress on your comp, because you look at them, and they don't have a tank line anymore on SK, they just have Zin, who gets to go in, and they really have to create everything kind of perfectly to run a comp with Kale once team fights start. But if they get out of laning phase strongly, we're good. I wonder if we should check Diamond's runes. Yeah, I think yeah. I think that may be what we're going to go with. But, um, you know, Kale's something that Dyrus has run for a what, long time. And uh, they went away from it. Carthus, and yeah. they stopped playing it. Don't know why. That's, I don't know why either, in all yeah. honesty. So, Darkness for his rune page, 6.8 AD from his quintessences, 15 attack speed. That procs Nocturne's passive more and more, 13 armor, and then he loves that split of MR and MR at 18. So let's check his masteries for Nocturne. Whether that's going to be 921 or 219, it is 921. So, a more defensive Nocturne. Same masteries we've really seen him on other champions, and I want to check the supports, because that's the most unique room pages we've seen really throughout this turn. Let's look at what Ghosty Pepper does. He did the aggressive support earlier with Health Quince. Does he do something similar on Blitz? Move speed, which is actually, I think that's what Mad Life does on Blitzcrank as well. Mm. So much about just getting in range for your Power Fist, and your hook becomes so much more dangerous when you can also just run up to someone and punch them. It just makes it so much threat, AD, MR, and armor as well. So his masteries. 1, 15, 14. Those are the more standard support masters. I think that's got to be the most common support page, in all honesty. Getting the gold, getting the move speed, and then getting that one mastery point to enhance your exhaust or ignite. So, Ghost you Pepper with those. No GP10 aside from his masteries. Let's take a look at SK Niff on Sona. See if he's done anything unique here. <clears throat> Runes, of course. Health. So... Got to be really, really cautious against a Blitzcrank lane with the health. But at the same time, he's foregone his armor yellows for goal per 10, really making sure to get that. Put some armor on his red, so not quite as efficient. And then MR on Booze as well. Let's check his masteries, see if he's done anything. Minor went 21 utility. Nope, 16, 14. So defensive, a little bit of health regen, making sure to get that GP10. So really just dual specking that defensive utility tree. Very common for supports there. We're just looking towards Kevin, maybe, as well. Let's see what Kevin's doing on that top lane. So Kevin on Kale, of course, doing the 16 AD, 13 armor, and 11 magic resist. And his masteries, of course, are 21.9. So full-on AD carry for Kevin. Not the Candy Panda AD carry, though, because he doesn't have 19.11 in his masteries. Still pretty strong there. What else should we check? Ocelot. We got to check Ocelot, because he's done either defensive room pages. I'm guessing he's doing the MR on this one for his blues, and no, he's went straight up AP on Katarina. Same as his Nidalee page, very aggressive, dangerous Katarina, and 21-9, so slightly defensive on his masteries, but not really at all. Only doing that because you don't need mana on Katarina, so all out aggression from him against Cillian, which will be very dangerous once the double bombs start coming in from Alex. Going the Will Smith 0-0 masteries. Which is, is that what they're called? Yeah, that's what he called it, the page. So. Uh, Obviously a big fan of uh, Will Smith. So, if you are watching, ladies and gentlemen, then uh, please remember to tell your friends to tune in and watch. This is Moscow 5 versus SK Gaming. After all, it's not something you see every day in an offline tournament here in the Casino de Paris. And if you are watching, get on. Obviously, it's on Twitch.tv. Uh, and it's Ogaming underscore international, I believe, is the, uh, the exact URL. Or TalesOfTheLane.com. Get on there and... Uh, I don't know whether it's English or French on the TalesOfTheLane.com website. I guess it... I think it autoplays English, but if you want to find French, you can just go to Twitch TV and get that link as well. Yep. So there's uh, there's obviously two streams. We've got Chips and Noir. Actually, I tell a lie. It's it's Skyart and uh, Chips, and Chips right now, by the looks of it. Yeah, so Skyart and Chips, there they are on your screen. So Skyart, you may recognize him from Cypher before. He used to play uh, certainly at the Intel Extreme Masters New York. Uh, mm -hmm. I believe he's at Kiev as well, the Intel Extreme Masters. There's SK Gaming on the left-hand side as the red team, Moscow 5 as the blue team on the right, and there is their beautiful emblems in front of them. So, uh, and the teams have actually kind of requesting that they can keep those. I don't know whether, I've not heard whether they can or yet or not, but uh, they certainly want to keep them, so they're, they're loving it. So, 
you may see those emblems actually appearing in tournaments uh, from now on. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe they're going to take I them mean, with them, I guess. They are really awesome. They to be are. Fair. Like, it's just seeing the team logos so just come out in yeah, that. They're good. Yeah. Because exactly. nobody really does that. You know exactly what it communicates, and it's so minimalist in a sense that it just it works quite well. So here we are, ladies and gentlemen. It is Moscow 5 as the blue team on your screen right now. 1-0 up against SK Gaming. Starting to get their power back on, and they kind of have a team comp that they really seem to agree with. It's it's that zillion seat. Curse seems to be onto something. You know, I've always said with Moscow 5, the way to beat Moscow 5 is to be aggressive against them. Curse. Right have that sussed out. They've just never really managed to make it work. And for the first time, I believe, they've managed to make it work. They may get a hook here. If we can pan the screen just up a little bit, you can see the Kale is just there. If he edges down... Oh, oh Nif. Nif. Oh, Nif. Oh, Nif. Oh! oh! Flashed out of the hook straight away. And the reaction time now is just like, oh, crap, I'm in trouble. It's strange because it... He must not have had vision around the corner because I feel like Ghosty Pepper could have blind hooked him. And here it comes. He's not going to have the hook back Didn't up. Didn't have the hook up for another five seconds. You can yeah. see the cooldown in the bottom left there. So, so showed themselves a little early. And yep. actually, I think they're going to go for a counter invade here. I'm seeing Aranea down the bottom. Is he going to think of going for red? You can see he's just pivoting on the bottom lane. Meanwhile, at SK are going to go around the long way down towards this bottom lane. And look at the caution there. They're s hugging the sidewall because they know Especially now that Nif has no flash, that blitz hook would be absolute death. So Darian going to top lane, you can see he's backing off. So it's going to be a standard bottom lane for Moscow 5. We do see the SK counter invade is coming invading. In. Yeah, so Aaron A going in there, want to pan down bottom. I think the whole crew is there aside from Kale. Nif 5 didn't actually back off, so they're probably going to trade blue for red here. And then it's going to be very interesting to see what the lanes actually hash up. No, actually, we'll see it fairly simple. Therian going to be up top lane against Kevin, uh -huh. and they're trading blue buff for red. So doesn't look like a fight. We might see some kind of collision as SK and Moscow 5 work Return towards to lane, the bottom yeah. lane, but they get seen by that ward. So there we go. it's, it's going to be, be really Pepper. interesting. Gosu Pepper is going to bump into him. There they go. Gosu Pepper comes down straight into the bush. Gosu Pepper's in trouble. He's not going to be able to get out of this one. He flashes through. He's got a mana shield. He's got a mana shield. Oh, he nearly landed the hook straight away. Now Alex is in trouble. They're going to turn the damage on towards him, but immediately Genja responds and puts a lot of damage down on Candy Panda. He can't avoid through the bush there because obviously the eyes that you get on from the... Uh, Phosphorus Bomb. Phosphorus Bomb will show you going through that bush. That's the word, exact word I was after. Uh, oh, meanwhile, go to the mid, please. You can see Ocelot getting cool on uh, Diamond Prox putting the damage down on Ocelot. Very aggressive start from both teams, but everybody levels out. No advantage gained. Blue and red exchanged. Everybody returns to lane. Jack. That was the collision that we thought was going to happen when they did make it. And what ended up happening is a couple flashes were burned. Exhaust got burned on Nif. Overall, they really just traded one summoner spell for another. And now we can see this bottom lane really starting to hash itself out. You got to say Candy Pen and Nif get a bit of an edge because Ghost of Pepper was sent back to shop, but they didn't really take anything off that. So it looks like fair trade, restart at level two almost for that lane and game on. Also, Aaron Ayer actually used his smite. The junglers are meeting actually. The junglers are fighting back and forth. You can see Alex Hitch is coming around there. Diamond Pox caught out a little bit, but if Alex Hitch gets and joins this fight, he might be able to get a bit of damage down. Ocelot didn't join him. He's actually brought the Siege minion with him, so he's going to do put a bit of damage. Aaron Ayer doesn't have smite right now. Hasn't taken his red, so he used it on that blue steel. And uh, Ocelot steel, sitting on two minion kills, getting caught out by Nocturne early, really kind of set him back. And these junglers are brawling back and forth. Here they come. So Aaron Ayer coming around to Diamond Prox. Diamond Prox backing away with that blue buff of his own. He doesn't want to let his own one go. And now you can see Alexic is starting to come across here. They've also got Kale coming down. Jax is now heading down here. The blue is reset. Could they collapse on him? Alexic, what level is he taking? Has he got the slowdown? It might be enough. The flash was burned. Darian isn't going to get the stun on him. And they will all return to lane once again. So Very much aggressive. roaming early on in this game for no benefit, really. It's been a bunch of engages, and then people kind of end up flashing away. RNA and Diamonds both really wasting a bit of their time. You can see the junglers are putting themselves behind, fighting with each other so much. They're both out of health potions. They're both under 10 minion kills. And finally, it seems like they're picking up their buffs. So Diamond Prox was able to get his blue buff. Looks like RNA is able to get his red buff now that he's smited it. But with this, this is dead even close early on. Well, the problem is actually that he's got both blue buffs and he's got both red buffs. That's true, actually. Yeah. So both junglers are a little bit still. I don't have the. I, I mean, would we, what words. would you be happier with? A double red or a double blue? 
in all honesty, in this match, with how many summoner spells have been burned already, I would be happier with double red. But I think what's going to end up happening, since they've already kind of expended themselves ganking, is the double blue is going to be better. Because blue is better for farming the jungle than red buff, and Diamond Prox might pull himself a little bit ahead because of it. So we'll see whether that is the case as Diamond Prox goes back to bite. Has to get himself a chunk of those health pots. Actually didn't. Didn't get any health pots, just went straight Berserker Greaves. Wants to get aggressive. Nocturne heals up a huge amount from his passive, and the Berserker Greaves is a pretty good first buy. It's something we're seeing a lot more of on these Nocturne players. So he's going to look to hit level 6 almost as fast as he can here. Might try for some pre-6 ganks, but I actually kind of doubt it. RNA, got to be careful for Darien. Wow. He goes straight aggressive, actually turned into Darien, puts it down, immediate flash, Darien just pops him where he stands. That was a mistake there, I feel. You know, he went aggressive, used the crescent straight, really is, thought he was going to knock him away, but Kevin was not reacting quick enough, and the, I don't think he was quite expecting the empowered strike to do that much that quick. I think that was also one of those cases where you realize you're 2v1, so you get kind of Confident. fake strength, yeah. in a sense, and he didn't realize he was below half health at the start of that fight, and the Darien had flash and ignite up. Terrible lapse of judgment there, and a great capital, great job of Darien capitalizing on that play. Genji being forced back a little bit there. We just saw one of the hooks from Gosu Pepper not quite landing. Those hooks can be quite important. As it is, we are seeing, we have seen already Candy Panda return to lane. So you can see he's actually behind in the CS. That's mainly for the fact he's been back to buy. Picked up that Doran's Blade. Double Doran's Blade picked up by Genja. So slight advantage there as Gosu Pepper takes up away. And they're going to go on towards Darien. Uh -oh. RNA is going to go down again here. That second bomb is going to be going. It's going to be enough. The bomb will finish him off. It's going to be a kill for Moscow 5 once again. Alex H picks this one up with the assist, and immediately the snowball could start. This could be really bad for them. Having O2 on your jungle, and this is what's happened to SK in both of the games that they lose. Once RNA falls behind, the laners aren't that good at winning on their own in a sense, and RNA needs to be able to babysit those lanes and help them out. Once he's started O2, that double red buff only having the Doran's Blade, it's gonna be so, so hard. All the other lanes Oh look to God. struggle off Full this. Dive. Full dive. Full oh. dive coming down the bottom here. Diamond Prox is there. Alex Lynch is there as well. He's going to get the Felix on towards Nif. Oh, but it turns him towards the turret. It can be so random. Sometimes it can turn you against them. But this time it saved him. And Ocelot tried to take advantage and get the race. Didn't really feel confident enough though. And SK does seem to be playing a little bit scared. Can't really blame them when all their aggression ends up getting turned around on them. But Darian's Darian farming. even supposed to be the matchup. He picked up that red buff off of RNA and he's been able to turn that back onto Kale. I mean, I said that the Jax, that the Kale was a great pick against the Jax, but then I remember there's there's a Kale only player actually right, someone who's just very good at Kale, and he actually says Jax is one of the weaker matchups. Anyone who can actually get on top of Kale and trade damage well is a good matchup against him. So even though Kevin picked it last, it may not have been a very smart pick against Darian's Jax. And just how confident was Darian there, just to go pick up the red buff? Oh, he's just going to smack Kevin in the face. He's going to force the flash. Leap strikes back on it. Look Counter strikes this. down. He might be enough. He has not got his ultimate available. So he's already he did have his ulti. He was out of mana. Oh, from he did have the, the mana, lane. of course. Wow, and I was just about to say, Darian was so confident in the fact that he got the red buff and just came strolling back past. It's like, hey, got your red, see ya. Oh, Ocelot trying to get damage on Alex, but really just wasting his ultimate and he pops a health potion. And now that RNA can't really support his lanes, that Kevin has essentially lost lane to Jax already. And then you look bottom and the Corky Blitzcrank versus Nif and Candy Panda. Oh, here's the gate on Ocelot. And that's Ocelot, a dead man. They got no him. way he's gonna get away from that one. The bomb's enough, it finishes him off. Alexic picks up the kill. And the crowd goes wild. We did talk about the fact that Moscow 5 are actually supported by the French crowd. The irony is they didn't make it to the finals. The first time they've really been supported, I think it's safe to say. Even then, we got over 100,000 viewers for the third place game on Tales of Lane. And people, this is a match people wanted to see. It is a match, yeah. So it's a third place game, but these are two very well-known teams, and they are going to battle it out against each other. So Moscow 5 still has a chance for bitter redemption, as does SK, and you bet it's almost more important for these teams not to finish last, I feel, than to finish third. And that might be what they're playing for here. Now, in terms of these hooks, you've got to assume it's Niffy's going to be plumbing to get. But I haven't really seen the hooks landed yet from Gosu Pepper. I mean, oh, it's often called, and he did go for Candy Banner again. Why would you go for Candy Banner when he can, can shift out of it? When Sona generally is just such a plumb target to grab. In all honesty, I'm not sure. I think he's... Candy Pan is putting him, making himself just, presentable, and Ghost Pepper is just maybe? going for it. It could just be just the damage. He's maxing his rocket grabs, so he is getting fairly good poke. But Nif's going to sustain a lot of that back up, being Sona, so it's not really winning them the lane. But even then, they're up in the lane, 73 to 62, so it's not really broken, and they're winning every other lane. Should still probably try to 
pull in Nif, though. Yeah, that top lane seems like it's in trouble to me. Despite the fact the farm looks close, I feel that Darien definitely has the advantage over him. Alexic get dodging out of the way of Ocelot's uh, ultimate there, trying to put the damage down on him. He just doesn't seem to have enough to trade right now. And here comes Ocelot in trouble once again because the wraiths are being invaded just to the side of him. You can see Diamond Prox in there taking the wraiths. And this is Diamond Prox. This is the Diamond Prox we expect to see in the base, taking everything away, taking anything from the jungle. Darien the same, he just comes around taking the red. So often he did that back in the early days of Kiev, etc. with Shivana. And there we go, he's going to come around. Gonna Actually, gonna this a bit. He's going to walk straight into each other. They're going to trade yeah. Mims while you can see Diamond Prox was not expecting that one. Has to use his spell shield or whatever the heck the thing's called for Nocturne. It's not a spell shield, it's uh, the same damn thing though. It's the W. It's the W. <laughs> Is that what you're going to call it? You're going to check. Oh, he yeah, almost makes himself look smart. The but he Shroud goes, of Darkness. He goes and checks. Really? Shroud of Darkness. Of course, that's what it's called. Ocelot catching on towards Alex Hitch there, though, but they're slow in the bomb. Is it enough? They're going to dive in. They're going to finish him off. Ocelot is going to go down. It's Alex Hitch once again. Ocelot is in all sorts of trouble in that bottom lane. Genja now continuing to put the big bombs on Candy Panda as well. And as it stands, Moscow 5 starting to get very dominant here. The slow and the bombs on towards Aaron Air again. It's going to take him down to about half health. He can't stand the trade with this one. Moscow 5 continuing to put pressure on that mid turret. And this is just seemingly going to be a too difficult recovery for SK because without He might finish it. Wow, he's just going straight in. He's going to... He's used his ultimate and gets the bomb and then just uses his ultimate, comes back to life. Very, very clever play from Alex Hitch there. I guess every Zillion player would just be like, well, that's normal. I mean, but this is this is also why Curse didn't allow oh. Moscow 5 to get Zillion, because they're so comfortable playing this style. Alex just diving into turrets. They're roaming extremely well. They're staying in fights where you the other team's judgment wouldn't quite be there. I mean, way back in Season 1, at the start of Season 2, with no changes to Zillion, Zillion was permabanned on NA servers. Yeah. And then people kind of learn to play against it, and there's certain things that you kind of do just... The way you fight against a Zillion is so much different than the way you fight against a normal team. Low health targets suddenly aren't something you dive in for. Kills just don't seem to come where they should. And unless you're very used to playing against a Zillion, it catches you off guard. And since we haven't seen it really widespread availability The lately, last time I remember it is SK, Solse at Gamescom 2011. SK doesn't know how to play against it, it yeah. seems. Well, I don't think they knew how to play against it back then either. Yeah, uh, it didn't work out so well for them. Ocelot's in trouble though, and again, it's going to be Diamond Prox diving on him. Is the damage there enough though? Aaron Air comes around, has to use his ultimate to bat them away from Ocelot there. I mean, Alex Inch is going to continue chasing. He uses his speed buff instead. He's going to put the damage down on Aaron Air now. He's in trouble because he's got the double. They're doing buff the here. dragon while they're doing this. They are doing the dragon. Let's have a look down towards Ghost and Pepper coming around. Candy Panda and Nif tried to come around, trying to force something, but Moscow 5 too strong right now. 6 0. And 12 minutes 43 into this game, the dragon goes down and the gold advantage stretches once again to 5,000 gold. Candy Panda has to arcane okay, shift away from this one. Ghostly Pepper looking greedy and maybe trying to pick something out of it. The blue buff taken away. While this is all happening, ooh, nearly got the true shot barrage across. Just try. Yeah, they're trying happen. to split push the Look top lane. Alex, Alex is. is just in between the inner turrets. And this is a matter of. We talked about the SK gaming tilt in a lot of ways. They're so emotional that they're not the best at coming back when they get the slightest bit down. First of all, there's a the jump between the finals and the third place game where they have kind of time to recover, but the really short instance of time in between games, they really just seem to be completely on tilt at this point. No one really seems to be communicating together. If we had the kind of the player cams, I'd almost imagine not many of them would be talking with each other because this is a moment where you don't really have any ideas on what to do. It's like you want help in your lanes, but your jungler is more far behind than anyone else, so going into lanes is most likely just going to feed more kills. It's about trying to find opportunity, but it's just not there. You know, more often than not, I see with these teams that every time Nocta does get picked, he actually does pretty well. I'd love to see the stats on him, certainly from MLG, and maybe from a few teams lately that have been maybe on a lease patch or something like that. Whenever he gets picked, the kills tend to follow up. It's obviously never the same from Solo Queue because mm -hmm. the team is there to follow you through. That's going to be the power fist on towards Nif. Oh, oh. wow, a big whiff on the Kat Katarina ultimate there. Katarina trying to get onto it. Ocelot trying to get the kill. He does manage to get the one down. True Shot Barrage missing across Ghost Pepper. They're going to turn this mountain back around, trying to flash out of the damage, but Gadaima Prox going to be very aggressive. Has got the Riggles, but is not going to finish it off. He but wants here to do comes something. Alex Zitch coming round the back. Nif is in trouble. Got him. Nif is dead. Nif is dead. Forget about Nif. It's Ocelot now is going to be the target. There's the exhaust going down. Puts the Zillion ultimate. He's happy to tank up the turret, take the damage. Ocelot's going to be careful. He's going to come back up. He could put two bombs down. Instead, he just speeds himself up and gets out of there. Genja immediately putting more damage down, but Aranea joins the party. 
Now Genja is in trouble. He's going to dive on towards him. Just Valkyrie's away. And they are still going oh. for Genja. Alex Inch now could turn around, puts the bomb down. Is it going to be enough? No, the Ocelot goes back in. The exhaust goes down, but he's on the turret. Oh. And Genja picks up the kill. Oh, the mystic shot from Candy Panda finishes off Alex Inch. They do get something out of it, but it's not a lot. It's 8-2. A long extended 4v4. I got to say, though, that is a win for SK. Getting the shutdown on a 5-0 Alex is good gold for them, and they were very close. Slight misplay there by Ocelot getting caught in the turret. But that's the kind of stuff they're going to need to do more of if they want to crawl their way back in this game. So going aggressive, trying to turn things around. Not really working out that well. Darien back to top lane. While this was all happening, Kevin and Darien have been farming in this top lane. Actually, Kevin had made good headway against Darien. Sort of suddenly brought it back. You can see he's put a lot of damage down on that turret as well. So while Kevin's been out of the game for a while, when he starts getting into it, are we expecting, meanwhile, down the bottom, there's a bit of a poke going on down the bottom there. You can see it's Gozu Pepper taking down very low. He's going to come around. He still wants to try and land that hook. Genja coming to back to win the day. Wow, one phosphorus bomb is going to wipe out <laughs> that whole wave. He's looking forward to this. this. These are one of the moments when you're as an AD carry, you go, Rah! phosphorus bomb. His Fed is nope. just going to He's going to freeze it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just going to freeze the lane. Doesn't want to push it. That, I would have been tempted. I'm going to be I fair. I would have used, yeah, yeah. used a phosphorus bomb. I would have gone Q. Because it's nice to see those big numbers just come up. She's like, yeah. I did it's that. a smart play, though, because they knew two members are going back to the base, so they're going to deny an extra wave of experience, essentially, out of that. Well, now Darren's going to jump on Kevin if he gets the chance. The no, advantage they have, you, you know, you would think, okay, let's just shovel the lanes because we clearly won all these lanes. Even in the last game, though, they built up their advantage quite a lot before they decided to shove. There's something about just the way they're controlling these games that they don't want to seemingly fast push. They don't have the best wave clear or the fastest wave clear, but they're just winning fights. And it's, it's a slow win in a lot of ways. Even going back to base, not overextending themselves, not giving SK any chance to really collapse in because if SK wants to create something, they kind of just have to dive. Ocelot taking more bomb damage there. He just can't life steal his way back. He can't trade with Alex Hitch right now. He's definitely in trouble. 1 3 0. Went for that whole team, guys. But when you're up against a very strong Diamond Proxy, he's going to have to get away and use his ultimate to flash out of that one, actually. And just try and avoid the damage. And then finally, Cass Ocelot does go down in the middle. Ghost of Pepper coming back down there. Alex Hitch has got the revive once again on and just pulls himself back into it as oh, we we're gonna watch get it again. a rewind. We get a replay on there and he dives in and again tries to use it around. That's Nocturne getting avoiding the damage down the bottom there. So you can see it happened at the exact same time. Make sure he takes the damage too. He does get that revive through. And that's level 12 to level 9 on Ocelot versus Alex. And that is just not going well whatsoever. Total control. Rod of Ages this time. A lot of times people have been going Athene's and Holy Grail. As we try to zoom well, up to live. Ghost Pepper's heading down there. We seem to have... Something's going on. Oh, okay, we're back. It's all good. Ta -da. Yeah. All right. It kind of was speeding up, and now they are going to come around the backside of Nif and Candy Panda. We'll try and find a, a moment to... Don't jump. Don't jump. Don't do it. Because you can see coming down the bottom lane. Bottom lane. They are going towards the top lane as well. They're going to dive on towards the top. They're diving on the bottom. Nif is going to get caught out here. Nif is the one to target to go for because he's managed to land the crescendo. He's going to get their shots. Let's he's go. got a bomb on each of them, actually. Yeah, he's got a bomb. Oh, and Alex just takes that one down. And actually, Darren avoided the damage in the top lane as well. So very clever play. Now we speed things up, try and get back into live there. As Piri tries to eloquently handle the camera. And there we go, back live. Awesome. Good job. 10 so to 2, 7,000 gold. Now they're starting to take the turrets. They got the mid and the top down. Jax has got his Trinity Force. They got the Rod of Ages. They're they really the starting to hit their sweet well. spot. And they're just going straight in. They got the pink ward in that brush. No <laughs> Oracle's Elixir yet. The ward still gets cheered. They might look to fight this. They almost certainly will look to face it. You can see, actually, Alex, Alex is taking a lot of damage there. Ocelot forced him away. It's a bomb, though. Diamond Prox doesn't want to give this one up. You can see Alex is still lingering around the side as he goes to Pepper. Genja now joining the party. They're going to get a hook. They went for Nif. They get the power fist down. There's the phosphorus bomb. The big bomb comes through. Genja picks up the kill. And Alex is just trying to chase any advantage he can. Puts the bombs down. And Ocelot, Ocelot turns it around. Manages to get the ultimate back down again there. He's going to come back alive. Araneus tries to crest and sweep him back into the walls of the turret, but it's not enough. And Araneus is going to pay the price with a bomb on his head. Oh, and Gosu Pepper came around the back and uh -oh. got onto Ocelot. Power fist on towards Candy Panda. He's going to be able to escape it. He may even turn the damage back on towards Gosu Pepper. He's got to be careful. And Alex Hitch comes back. He doesn't really have the mana to deal with this one. They still haven't got the blue, by the way. Gosu Pepper is going to have to back away from this one. He, oh, mana shield saves his day. They and they do did avoid the pick damage. Up they the picked blue up the amongst blue. the chaos. I, didn't I think even see Gosu it. Pepper got it with a random yeah. proc of his ultimate or something. SK might try to just rush a dragon down here because they know everyone's shopping. They have to do something, something because yeah. 28 to 19, 
13 to two, really just not having any luck against Alex. Every time Oc Ocelot tries to go in for a kill, Zillion Alt pops down and then Ocelot dies. And it's just seemingly happening over and over again. There's an Aegis completed onto Diamond Proc, so he's gonna be diving even harder they have the revives coming through. You can actually see Alex might be going towards a Guardian Angel, or he just picked up a Null Magic early just to have it, so they're not giving any chance of Ocelot getting a this reset. This is a very dead Candy Panda right here. There's uh, Genja coming from below, as well as Ghost yeah. Pepper, and they're just or driving him towards nip. Darian. They're driving him towards Darian. Darian's getting Niff. Oh, he has to use Crescendo. Candy Panda goes down flat out of Niff. That's going to be one last shot. Oh, Genja tried to steal that one. Kill secure, I think you could say. Popped the ignite say. right yeah. before, so he didn't let the missile get through. And this is a stomp coming through by Moscow 5. Everything seems to be going their way. I would not want to talk to SK Gaming after this game. Not after this tournament. Like, this has been a very disappointing showing for them. Where's Here comes going. He's diving in the mid. He's going on towards Aranea. And Gosu Pepper trundles in chasing. Tries to get the hook. Lands the hook. Gets the power fist down. Crescent Sweep tries to drive him away. But it's not enough. And you can see Ocelot comes around. Actually interrupts it. Gosu Pepper with his ultimate. There goes Aranea. Now they're going to turn on towards Ocelot. Power fist will be back up in a minute. No. Gets oh. the hook. Expected Ocelot to get away. Doesn't matter. Diamond Prox has the Riggles. He'll just tank it on and just finishes him off. He's got an Aegis and a Riggles, actually. Trinity Force now on Jax as well. Trinity Force on Genja. SK Gaming have all everything to do. I don't, I don't, th there's yeah. just no way out of this one for them. 32 to 22,000 gold across. And the big, another big oh, wow. thing for SK right now is they don't the have flash, a tank line. The flash, flash engage. Alex is going for this. He doesn't have Arcane Shift. He can't get away from it. Has to use the flash. He turns back on towards Nif there. Alex Hitch is just like, oh. I want the bombs to kill me. I want to use my ultimate. Oh no, actually Kevin comes back, uses the ultimate, but the rest of the team are driving in. Here comes Darian round the side, another bomb goes down, Nif takes that one. And you can see everybody else just off the side, they are driving them back. They finally back off from this one. Alex Hitch is in full command right now, 8-1-2. He's got that needlessly large rod, he's got that rod of ages and the Sorcerer's Boots. He's just feeling so confident with himself now right now. He's just thinking, I wish this was the game before. Darian might be in trouble, Darian does get a shutdown, that's a good shutdown yep. for them. They picked up a big chunk of gold on Jax there. A little bit of overconfidence there coming up from Moscow 5. I mean, we saw where Alex was playing the game. Well, Genji's Darian taking the going in for it. There we go. Steel. And this is just Moscow 5 being incredibly far ahead. And one of the reasons they can do this, aside from being ahead 10,000 gold, is just SK's team comp in general, just not having a tank line, especially when you pick Zinn as your only beefy man and then he falls behind, it just becomes even harder and harder. It's one of the reasons you don't... Beefy man. Beefy man? <laughs> That's a tank, is a beefy man right okay, there. Okay, okay. That's, that's, that's a phrase I've not heard used in commentary, but uh, we've got a beefy it's man the first right time here. for everything. So uh, next time you see SK, say, hey, are you a beefy man? <laughs> you need more beefy dudes in your team comps, <laughs> clearly. Oh, my word. Genja just off the side there trying to get a little poke on. But like you say, they haven't got anything to stop this. And it's because you normally initiate with your tank, but it's just initiate with Ocelot into a Kale Alt or with Nif's Flash Crescendo, but None of these things are strong enough to follow through in any meaningful manner. You can see a bit of resiliency being bought by everyone on Moscow 5, and it's just no one can actually look to fight on SK because they will get obliterated. And here they go. Oh! oh full length grab on towards Nif there. Has to crescendo, but honestly, it's not enough. The ward's gone down. There, there goes. Diamond Prox diving on towards Nif. Turns it around. Goes towards Ocelot. Ocelot's now the target. Ocelot gets dropped very quickly. Nif's still alive, but it doesn't matter. He's not a prime target. The bomb may even get taken towards him. Nearly flashed into it. The hook from Gosu Pepper. Landing them hook after hook. And there's the double kill for Genja. And that is Moscow 5 taking full chance here. And Gosu Pepper even survives it because there's the Zillion ultimate. And it was a three for zero exchange. Are they going to turn towards Baron? Are they, you know, SK could just surrender here, to be honest, because it is this over. This is a lot of pain for SK. And you don't like to say a game is over, but this one is over. looks like you can throw in the towel, especially once this Baron gets down. Barring some miracle, barring some ridiculous throw from Moscow 5, you know, barring disconnects, but, you know, we can... Well, we are on live. They can still pause because we're in custom games. I mean, Baron buff coming down 24 minutes, 13,000 gold advantage, items across the board, no tanks on SK's team. Brilliant team comp by Moscow 5. Everyone, they have a Jax, who is fed, he is scaling. Good performance by Moscow 5. Danger, Gotta danger, Will Robinson, I believe, is uh, the phrase that should be used. And Ocelot is uh, 171. He's just been he's just been shut down by Alex. I mean, like look say, at the whole team. Like you can say he's one seven one, but there's 062 in the jungle, 042 on, on well, the support every side. Every time he's tried to get a kill, it's just been mitigated by that ultimate from Zillion. 
Alex has just, just been there every and time. And they picked Katarina into Zillion as well. They yeah. intentionally said they were okay with that matchup. And it's something that happened in the qualifiers as well. Zillion beat up on Katarina in the qualifiers. I don't remember the exact teams, but that is not a good Katarina matchup because she relies on the reset and Zillion lives to deny it. And it's just a matter of and then, stubbornly picking in. I think they tried too hard to disrupt their playstyle. And let's not forget, also it's actually pretty damn good on Katarina. We yeah. saw him in the in the group stage. Go see Pepper just comes around, they immediately have to back off there. They can't fight the blue as the ward cheer still gets out there. It never gets old. That's gonna be a thing for the rest of you know, of I, uh, League of I Legends. I think it gets old. You think it gets old? It <laughs> does get old, yeah. <laughs> Nevertheless, Alex does pick up the blue buff. They come around the side. Oh, Candy Panda's got to be careful here. There's the grab. Does get caught out Boom. and just dropped in a split second. A blink of an eye and he goes down. Darian goes aggressive. Balls deep, some might say, and he drives on there. Counter-Strike on towards Kevin, but the rest of the team do back off. They pick up the turret, no problem. And they're just going to drive on towards the inhibitor now. Moscow 5 in full aggressive stance. There's nothing that can stop them going through this entire base right now. I don't think anything SK could do would be able to stop them. They are just going to drive no. it home. And I kind of respect SK here not surrendering. It's the nature it's of a competitive it's a game. Live it's a tournament. tournament game. I do like when teams end up playing it out, seeing if there's anything they can do. But this looks like an unstoppable force moving into their base. And they might just back off and clear the extra turrets because their creep line's a little short. Or they might just try to end it here. Let's see what happens. Another good pull. They get the hook and he just drops him in a second. Crescendo goes across. They start boogieing on the dance floor, but it is not enough and no Gangnam Style can prevent them from taking this turret. The Nexus will go down, and Moscow 5 will pick up 2-0. So it's 2-0 across the board, and it's going to be... Oh, no, they're going to try and turn fight. it. One final fling, maybe, from SK Gaming, but it is a fling not worth living, and it is going to be Candy Panda picks up a kill on Darian, but Candy Panda will go down eventually. No, Alex tried to get the bomb on him, but I think he manages to survive. Gots on the fountain just quick enough. The Nexus gets a little bit more poking. Genja returns. He's going to take it down. Another hook on Nif. Nif goes down. The kills there just keep on coming. It's 24-4. And Moscow 5 take third place in Tales of the Lane versus SK Gaming. There is Aranea, the beefy man. Is Look at just the shape not strong right enough. Now. The whole place is shaking because everybody is stamping their feet on Moscow 5. They're happy with this one, and it's good. You know, good sportsmanship despite the fact they've just got pretty comp comprehensively beaten in two mm -hmm. games. Regardless Still of what hands, the internet right. was saying, Ocelot did, they did not leave the stage. Did they not shook leave hands the stage. They shook hands and then they left. And the shouts for Moscow 5. Something that these guys, look, Alex Inch is milking it. The shouts for well, Alex, Alex has always been good with fans. It's just they haven't seemed to respond to him in some of these things. Finally, they have a good stand. And this is, honestly, this is the match people were expecting. This is great to see. Sportsmanship here. The two mids. You know, Ocelot's not going to be feeling good right now. It's no. just not gone well from that. But it's always good to see. And, you know, these guys, they've known each other for probably like nine months. Look mm -hmm. at the champ. The champ for also up there.